Hey there, folks. This is Mitch Firestone with Precision Trading Labs in New York City. It is uh, February 2nd, 2024, and um, we have just completed a week of trading here. Uh, it's Friday, and so I'm here to bring you some trading levels for the upcoming week of uh, February 5th, 2024. Um, before I get going here, of course, the, uh, the ubiquitous uh, disclaimer here, uh, Precision Trading Labs, everything that I'm about to present is for educational and informational purposes only. Um, Precision Trading Labs, we are not uh, financial advisors or money managers. And again, everything is for educational and, edu and informational purposes. Um, so taking a look at the uh, major market indexes here, uh, we're looking at a chart of the, uh, the SPY here. Uh, for those of you who are kind of new, new around uh, trading, uh, the SPY is the exchange traded fund, the ETF of the S&P 500. Um, and so, um, in fact, some of these charts actually only have kind of half, half, half the things that I want to show you. But then again, some of the other charts will have everything. And the reason being is that we're actually at an all-time high on some of these charts. And so, as a result, there is um, what what we refer to our our demand zones that are below, but there are no supply zones above. In other words, there's no trading above. Um, and I'll kind of go into that in a couple of minutes here. So if we take a look at the SPY here, though, um, these are these bars here, of course, are this is a daily chart of the SPY. So this represents uh, each bar represents one day of trading. So um, these are areas where uh, right. This is where we are right here now at 494 and change. And again, as I mentioned, uh, this is an all time high. And so uh, what we're doing at Precision Trading Labs is we are looking for demand zones. Uh, below. So in order to then uh, put on some kind of trade uh, that's uh, on the bullish side when we get a retracement or a return back to that demand zone. So I've marked out various demand zones here, and I will now kind of kind of go into very briefly uh, what they are all about here. Um, and in fact, these this demand zone here that actually occurred uh, occurred at the beginning of this year, the very beginning of this year in uh, January, this was actually based on the two hour chart. And so if I in fact change this over uh, to the two hour chart, uh, we can see right here um, that that area, notice price came up here, we then went sideways, uh, there was a, a period of consolidation, okay, then there was a gap, and then, um, and then and, and then a pop. And then, you know, Price kind of kind of went sideways for a bit, and then there was another uh, another shot up. And so when price returned to this level, we ended up getting another bounce out of here. Now we did not trade this level. Uh, this thing did that, that did not actually go as far as we would have liked um, in terms of a, of a, of a uh, quality demand zone. Uh, but but essentially, what these demand zones are, uh, they represent an exhaustion of of sellers. So right here, the buyers and sellers were in agreement uh, during this period where they were kind of shuffling shares back and forth for about these two days here. Um, and then again, we're looking at a two hour chart here. And then once, once that happened, something happened here though, and there was a change of perception and then there were, nobody was willing to sell here anymore. And so there was a pop here. Um, but in fact, um, it, it, normally what we're looking for when, when we have an exhaustion of, of sellers here, we, we want to actually see this thing kind of rocket out of here and go a, a, go a long distance. And so price came back here. So in retrospect, uh, this was in fact a demand zone. And we then, get, we, we then got another bullish move out of this. Uh, however, we, again, th that's all theoretical because in this particular case, we did not get a trade out of this. Uh, this just... It did, did not meet our criteria. Okay, so right now though we are looking for if we get if we then if we get some sort of correction in the market, uh, we are going to be looking for something where we can effectively buy the dip, um, but buy the dip intelligently. And by that, by we mean um, we're looking for an area where uh, there was an exhaustion of sellers. Uh, that exhaustion was 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 basically a very brief amount of time. And then what happened was once the, once the buyers and sellers were in agreement here, once the, the sellers left, um, the price then rocket added, rocketed out of there and went a long distance. We can see that occurred right here. OK. And so the theory is, of course, when price returns back to this, to this region, um, this was an area of interest where uh, 
where where there was buy, where there was a tremendous amount of buying pressure that manifested itself. And so when price came comes back here, we're expecting to see uh, a good percentage of the time some kind of repeat of this behavior. Uh, and the reason being is that this was a very sudden exhaustion of sellers here. Um, and no one was willing to sell anymore. And then notice that there was only a couple of candles here. So this only went on like for less than one trading day. And so consequently, when price returns back here, a good amount of t good amount of time, uh, we'll get a repeat of this behavior. Um, right here, we can think of buyers as the demand for shares. And we can think of the sellers in this as the supply of shares. And so right here, supply and demand are both in sync, okay? But then right here, when price rockets out of here, um, essentially they go out of sync. And at that point then, there is, no more, um, there is no more supply left in this, only demand, okay? And the reason we know that, of course, is because essentially buyers had to run up the price chart until they found willing sellers at all these points uh, afterwards. Okay. And so when price returns back to here, this is what we refer to as a demand zone. And the reason we call it a demand zone again is because there is no supply left anymore. Okay. So right in here on this level that I just showed you earlier, uh, this is where supply and demand were in balance. Okay. Right here though, we have supply and demand in balance for a very short amount of time, and then it goes out of balance, again, created by an exhaustion of supply here, okay? And so when price returns here, this is where we can then take on a, um, take where we, we, where we can express a bullish trade. And I'll talk about expressing a trade in a couple of minutes here, okay? But anyway, that's the story with the SPY. So this is an area based on the two hour chart where we, have a, where we have a demand zone here. And if we look to see where price closed here today at 494 and change, uh, we would need a pullback uh, to go down to about 474. Um, so that's about a 20 point drop in the S&P. And that's on a percentage basis, that's about 4%, okay? So we would need you know, a, you know, a fairly chunky, um, at least the way the chart is laying out right now, this this is the area where there is a quality. Uh, we think there's a quality setup uh, in order to then to, you know to, in order to buy. Okay. Now, of course, if one drops this thing down to a five minute chart or a ten minute chart, uh, we could we could certainly talk about um, uh, day trading levels in that. Uh, but for the for the purpose of this uh, recording here, uh, I'm just going to really really talk about kind of larger time frame and swing trading. Uh, kind of levels here. Okay, so that's the deal with the uh, the spy. Uh, normally, I would talk to you about um, uh, supply zones, but there are no supply zones because this is an all time high. Okay, so at any rate, though, this is the next trading level on the spy. Uh, if we go to the Qs, which is of course the uh, the um, uh, the ETF of the uh, the Nasdaq Composite, um, we are again um, at an all-time high. Uh, we actually just took out uh, this level, which occurred a few, uh, a small number of days ago. And then prior to that, uh, this level had taken out uh, something not too far below that occurred uh, a few months back. Okay. So uh, this is where we are now. Uh, again, as, as before uh, with the, uh, the SPY, uh, there are no supply zones here. Um, having said that though, uh, there are a couple of areas of demand in the two hour chart that we're looking at. And so one is right here. And let me just fill that one in here. And then, um, and that's that, then that's obviously a relatively uh, small distance below. And this only got created uh, a couple of days ago. Okay. And so this is an area of demand right here. Okay, and it's the same narrative, of course, that I used before on the spy. Okay, and so on the two-hour chart, here's a here's here's a demand zone right here. Here's another one here, and then this one right here. This is actually a, a daily demand zone, and more often than not, we find that uh, the higher the time frame, the more reliable uh, the zone is. So, if in fact, if I convert this back to the uh, the daily chart, we can now see uh, over here. We're right here, we have a drop, a base, and then a rally there. 
okay? And then right there, there's that area of consolidation. And then right here, this is again, that exhaustion of sellers that I talked about a few moments ago with the SPY. And we can also see these, these very, very wicky, indecisive candles here. Um, that was, this is where, um, you know, essentially this created the base of our level. And then right here, this, uh, this right bookend here, we can think of uh, this, this rocket out of here. Uh, that's a very highly energetic move, and that's indicative of a uh, of a major imbalance between supply and demand. And so, again, when price returns back to this region, uh, we can we're looking for um, we're looking for it to express a a bullish trade a bullish trade out of there. Okay, and so right here, this is where we closed today at uh, 429, so about 10 uh, points below on the on the Nasdaq on the Qs. Uh, which is about two and a half percent. Um, that's where uh, we, where we're looking at at a potential trade uh, with the Qs. Okay, and so that's that's sitting roughly uh, a little bit a little bit below uh, f uh, a little above four nineteen uh, down to about four sixteen and change. Uh, so that's about a two and a half point uh, level here. And I'll, I'll talk and I'll talk in a moment how we did the various ways we can express a trade uh, based based on these levels, okay? So there's a level right there at two and a half percent. Then a little further below here, there's another level that's around 4%, okay? And then right here, there's the, this, this daily level, and that's obviously a fair, a fair distance down. That's about 7%. And again, there are no supply zones because again, we're sitting at an all time high there, all right? So here is the um, uh, the Russell 2000, and now we get we finally get to uh, we finally get to talk about uh, we finally get to talk about supply, okay? And in fact, here is a trade that it, this was actually a set a, a setup that we had actually used right here. Um, so right here, this was a drop, and let me just blow this up here. Uh, this was an area that was the basis for a bearish trade, okay? Price came down here, okay, then, then it actually consolidated next to it. And if we actually broke this into the two-hour chart, uh, it would look a little cleaner here. In fact, let me just quickly do that here. Okay, so notice price came down here, and then we actually had inside of here, price actually goes up, pivots here, consolidates, and then drops. And you can see there's a gap. And then, and then a continuation down here, okay? So this was an area of supply. So this is the inverse of what I just talked about with respect to demand. This represents an exhaustion of buyers rather than sellers with the demand zone. And so when the price came back here, uh, when, when, the, when the, uh, the, the Russell 2000 returned here, um, again, this was in here for a very short amount of time. This is essentially one day because we're still looking at the two hour chart here. OK, and so this is just really one day. And so when pr when the price came back here, OK, notice price, the price kissed off the front here and then and then headed down over the course of the next uh, two and a half, three days or so. And so, in fact, this was the basis of a nice trade that our subscribers had. Uh, and some people uh, just shorted the stock when they had a large account. And most of our subscribers actually utilized uh, and bought puts uh, to, to express the trade here. OK, and so this is, in fact, what I wanted to kind of mention earlier. So this is what in terms of having these levels here, um, if you have a supply zone here, you can you can utilize the, the supply zone as the basis for any number of uh, different trade structures. One can, of course, sell stock. OK, so you can short the stock there. Another one would be to buy a put. Um, another way, another thing one could do is if let's just say the puts are very expensive, you could also buy a, uh, a bear put vertical spread where you would actually uh, buy one put at a higher strike and then sell another one at a lower strike. Uh, that would have the effect of reducing the premium as well as um, changing the, uh, the dynamics of the, uh, the option trade in terms of some of the option Greeks. OK, and then the last one is uh, for some people that like to create a passive income stream, uh, you could actually sell a, uh, a bear call vertical spread and that would essentially allow you to collect a premium. OK, but all of these are actually based on uh, the same exact levels and utilizing the same exact entry point, which is the uh, the front the front door of this uh, supply zone here. But one could express this trade again. And these are just 
what this is just the drop in the bucket here because obviously there are numerous other option strategies what one could do and of course within here depending on the strikes and the expir expirations you, you you can choose um there are there's you know almost an infinite number of ways you can trade this here okay <clears throat> so that's the supply zone here so that's a little above that's a little more than two percent from where we are now at 194 and change and then right down here oh uh, in the daily chart here we can see there were about four and a half percent down here. And again, here's a rally, a base and a rally there. Again, right here is where supply and demand were in balance. And then it goes out of balance here. And so when the price returns back here, there is the expectation because pr the price has not been back here. The, 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 the symbol has not been back here since and has not touched this region that in fact, there is still some residual demand in here. And so we can expect to see another bounce. And of course, if here and there, and you know, not, not here and there, uh, this is trading. And so as a result, does this work all the time? Of course it doesn't. Uh, this is trading. And so the one would, the way one would construct this trade, and let's just leave options out of it. If one was just going to buy this, uh, let's just say buy the symbol, the way one would, would construct this trade was you would basically get in at the front door here at 185 and 50 some odd cents. Okay, so that would represent your entry. And then what you would do is you would put your stop uh, a few pennies behind at this level. And that essentially is where you would manage your risk. So this is where your stop out point is gonna be. So I'm not gonna be so arrogant as to say, well, it's gonna come back here and, and automatically it's gonna, you're gonna get a bounce and it's always gonna work. Of course not, um, this is trading. Um, and then right here, this is this is this corresponds to how much risk we would have in the trade. Okay, so this is one level of risk right here between the, between our entry and our stop out. Okay, so right here, this this is equidistant here. This is one hundred percent. So this would be a one to one trade if this got there. That would be a two to one. That would be a three to one. Okay, and so that's how uh, that's how we kind of manage risk here, and that would, that also then would translate into our position sizing. Uh, and that's a discussion for another day. Okay, and of course the same exact same thing goes for the demand zone here. Okay, so one could express the trade by buying the stock, buying the call, and then of course they more doing a debit spread or a credit spread in the same manner that I talked about uh, for the supply zone. Of course, just you know turning everything on its head, of course, because then we're we're going in the opposite direction here. All right, so that's the uh, that's the Russell two thousand. Uh, last thing on the ETFs, we'll take a quick look at the bonds. Okay, this is the uh, the TLT. So this is the uh, the ETF of the uh, the bo the longer term bonds that are 20 years uh, and and more duration. Okay, so right here, um, here is where we close today at 96 and change. Okay, right here there is a drop, a base, and a rally here. So this is where uh, this is an area of uh, of uh, demand right here, and so. Uh, in terms of the distance where we are, uh, that's approximately uh, a little less than 4% down from where we are right here. Uh, over here, this was an area of, the, of supply here. And in fact, price, the price came back here, uh, you know, for the better part of a week, it kind of, there was a, a, a battle in here. Uh, but if you, if you, you know, you had an, a resilient enough stop, uh, it did in fact drop out of here. Uh, and so you can see that there was essentially this created, uh, um, th this was actually a, a, a trade. And s some people actually utilize this simply for uh, selling uh, premium, um, uh, as I recall. But anyway, this is a tested supply zone now. So when pr the price returns here, uh, there, is the, there is a fair expectation that this could be actually porous. So the first time when, 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 when the price returns here, there's an expression, the first test is best. Um, and so right here, this was a supply zone. This is the test. It barely held on here. Um, so when the price returns here, um, it, it I wouldn't be at all surprised to actually see, think, see, see this actually be porous and actually have, have this thing drive through. At which point then, that's our next area of, of fresh supply here. Okay, price has not been back there since. So in fact, one could, have, you know, on a short-term basis, uh, once price gets in here, uh, one could actually play a breakout trade uh, that goes through um, this, uh, this this failed uh, supply zone that we're actually expecting. 
So there's a couple of different ways we can one can play here. Again, wait for this thing to get through this zone and then have a short-term uh, breakout trade and then convert and almost hit the uh, hit the reverse button then and then look for a, 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 a bearish trade out of here. Okay, and that's that's sitting at around the, the 101 and a half level. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the story with the ETFs. And taking a quick look at some uh, some major stocks here. Uh, here is our uh, friends at Apple. Um, so right here, here is a rally, a base, and a drop there in the daily chart. Here, um, this is an area of uh, supply here. Um, we're gonna we would be a little more cautious about this because there is a little bit of trading and a little bit of consolidation that actually occurred right here. So I would actually be thinking about this a little more, thinking about this a little further, might approach this with a little more caution. Um, this would, in fact, would be a, a good opportunity to actually use utilize a debit spread because of the fact that you would run a lower delta on it. So that would lower uh, your risk on that. OK, and so right here anyway, this is where we've closed today. So we're about four and a half percent up here. And then right down here on the two hour chart, there is a drop, a base and a rally there. Uh, and that's about 5% down, okay? And so uh, these, are, these are our trading levels uh, that we're looking at for Apple. Uh, flipping over to Google um, uh, right here. Um, here is a, a, a clear uh, rally base and a drop there. Um, and in fact, this, I believe, was an earnings. Let me just take a quick look here. I think this was, yeah. So that blue cross here, that's associated, that's an earnings gap here. So in fact, we, we, we tend to be a little more cautious on news related, uh, particularly something like an earnings gap, because essentially this is all, you know, based on perception and, you know, a change in, a, a change of viewpoint here, not actual depletions of supply or demand here. Um, because the perception of the stock had changed there. So, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. So that's about 6% up here and that's about seven. And then we have a demand zone here on the two hour chart down here. Um, and that's, um, that's about 7% uh, down. Okay, this one I'm a little, we're gonna be a little cautious about. And the reason being is that this is kind of really nestled right in the middle of all this trading. So this is kind of like threading the needle here. So. Um, we're not. Um, um, we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see how when, when this pulls back, um, whether we end up taking this or not. Um, but those are that that's a preliminary level here. Right here we can see uh, this. The, here is a, a a rally, a base, and a rally. And those price came back here once, came back here again, and then kind of rocketed out of here. So we can think of this as either tested demand or support here at this point. Okay, but this is definitely not fresh demand anymore. Uh, if we go to Amazon um, right here, and let me go back to the uh, the daily chart here on this. Okay, right here, there is really no clean, uh, this, there is really no clean um, supply here or, or demand, in fact, uh, on, on the daily chart here. Uh, these are all okay, right here on the, for the, um, if, we, if we look above here, okay, we can see, okay, this is all now basically been here once. It's now been back here a second time. So, you know, if, 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 and now we're actually revisiting this here right now. If this thing would actually drop out of here, some people would, of course, call this uh, a triple top at this point. Um, but, you know, we, 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 we would definitely not be looking to short this at all here. Um, and in fact, it looks like it, 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 if the market holds together on Monday, uh, this is probably going to be a breakout here. Um, after that, above here, uh, this is this is a tested this is another tested zone. And this, if we actually brought this up to a weekly chart, we would see a weekly supply zone here. And then right here, there is that there is the test, and that obviously dropped out of there nicely. You know, kind of dug in there for a bit, uh, for a day or so. Uh, so one probably wouldn't want to watch that because they would you know you would have been flirting with your stock your stop at point here. But once it got going. Uh, that was obviously a nice uh, bearish trade there. So there's really nothing here on the daily chart. There is a one hour zone down here, about 8% down, uh, but that's a fair distance down. So uh, not a whole lot there on Amazon. And incidentally, one of the things we always talk about uh, with our subscribers is not every chart, um, not every chart has a, a setup. Uh, and so some people think, you know, whatever chart you're looking at, there has to be a setup. No. 
Um, not every chart has a setter. So uh, right here, um, if we go back to Tesla here. So here we are, on, here's, for, here's Tesla. So here's a good example of a zone that is, has gone basically only done half of its job. So if you go back here, okay, there was a drop, a base, and then notice this this march of green candles. Of, okay, and you can see that's a that's a pretty pretty you know robust move. Okay, and so th in fact this this qualified as a uh, as a demand zone here, but in fact we can see the zone has really only done half of its job. It has stopped the fall in price. Okay. But obviously, it, 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 but it really hasn't done anything much since. There was a little, little minor bounce, and then really not much after that. So um, there's really not, uh, not a whole lot uh, going on here for uh, for Tesla, um, right? Okay, okay, this this right here, from where we are now, this is a this is there's a zone right here that's below here, and that's over here. Here's a, it, in fact, this is the origin of a very strong move, a drop, a base. And then notice that pop there. Um, so that goes, and then you know, there's a pause, and then that, that's really the origin of this huge move that occurred here. Um, but that's obviously, a, 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 you know, that, that's about 9% down uh, from where, where we are now. Now, you might look up and go, okay, well, right here, this is an obvious area where there's an exhaustion of sellers. Um, that precedes this big gap. Um, this might be just kind of too obvious. We'll certainly keep an eye on it. But I don't necessarily know that we would we're going to be raised if we if we would get a recovery up here. I don't know if we would necessarily immediately jump uh, to uh, to short out of there or to do a bearish trade until we actually got some confirmation there. Uh, because if if all one had to do was this kind of short from something like this, uh, trading would be really easy, <laughs> and uh, it, you know, so, and and it isn't. Um, so quite often, uh, something like this may not necessarily work. So what we would do is we would we would wait to see some confirmation, before, you know, coming out of this thing, probably by looking at let's say a very bearish one-hour candle or something, or even a couple of couple of one-hour candles, or even a close a daily close below before we would actually then pull the trigger and go short out of here. So that's Tesla, and we'll finish up here with Netflix. So right here. Um, here's Netflix. There was actually nothing okay, above here. This is actually a weekly zone about 8% uh, above where we are right here. So you can see right here, price comes up in the daily chart, kind of, you know, plateaus here. And then notice then this, 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 this ex exhaustion of buyers that occurred. And if you change this into a weekly chart, uh, you'll see it kind of really, it, it kind of right now we're actually sitting at the uh, the 52 week high here, and then if we go right here, we can see right there. There's the the region that I just showed you in the in the daily, but you can see very clearly there's a rally, a base, and the drop there, and then notice that's just a huge you know a huge dump that occurs right at the uh, right at the beginning of uh, two years ago, at the beginning of uh, of uh, of uh, 2022. Okay, so. That's that region. Uh, so let me flip this back to the, uh, the daily chart here. So there's that weekly uh, supply zone that's sitting around 8% up. Okay. And then right down here, uh, there's really no demand until we get way that, you know, n n quality demand to, of at least, let's say, a two hour level. And that's about 6% down. The last thing I'll show you, though, is there is inside of here uh, a really tiny. Um, third, there's a 30 minute level here. Uh, anytime you see over, overlapping wicks and bodies, uh, there's a story in here. It's just that you can't see it. Um, or, you know, of course, when you, when you look at charts for a few years, you know, you can kind of imagine what, what, you know, what you kind of, you, to some degree, you can visualize, uh, what potentially is going on in here. Uh, but what you need to do here, of course, to expose the story is drop the time frame. So we're looking at the daily chart here. So if you notice, I made a note here, 30 minutes. So if we change this into a 30 minute chart, okay, and then we go back, you can see right here, this is the area uh, that I was just showing you here, okay? And so right here we have a very decisive uh, red candle here. Notice then these two kind of wicky green ones, and then notice this rocket that occurs right here. Okay, so this is the area where, again, there's the exhaustion of sellers here. 
and buyers run up the price chart in, in order to find willing sellers. So again, when price returns to here, uh, this is where we're going to, to express a uh, bullish trade in the manner that I uh, discussed a few minutes ago. All right. So at any rate, uh, that's uh, that's what I got here. So the one thing I would like to uh, leave you with here is um, if you uh, if you found this inter interesting and useful, uh, we would appreciate if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, uh, give us a like. And uh, I would be delighted to uh, uh, to talk to anybody about uh, how this can be utilized, uh, the concept of supply and demand for constructing uh, high probability trades. Um, in addition, not, uh, I didn't actually include this on the uh, slide here, but this can also, of course, be utilized uh, in creating uh, daily setups, as, excuse me, uh, uh, intraday setups, as well as swing trading. So the same way all of these things work with um, daily charts, weeklies, and two hours, uh, one could also utilize uh, two, three, and five minute uh, levels here as well. Um, the, the concept of supply and demand uh, is entirely uh, universal and fractal. So at any rate, uh, there you go. Uh, this is Mitch Firestone with Precision Trading Labs. Uh, thank you for the privilege of your time, and I will see you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye.